Hi everyone. In this video we're looking at how best to use the masonry layout options in the blog and portfolio elements in Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. The masonry layout is available for the blog, portfolio and gallery elements. The options are a bit different when creating a gallery. So please watch the separate video linked below for more information on how to use the masonry layout with the gallery element. But for the blog and portfolio elements, the options are largely the same. Let's have a look. I'm on the Avada Science website here, and as we can see a bit further down on this page, there is a blog element using the masonry layout. When using the blog or portfolio element with a masonry layout, we need to ensure we have posts with featured images assigned to them as these are what will be displayed. And when choosing your images, keep in mind that adding a blend of portrait, landscape and square images, as has been done here, will allow you to really see what makes the masonry layout stand out from a standard grid layout. Apart from the irregular grid layout that can be created by the masonry option, the masonry layout behaves differently than a grid when displaying text in the layout, the text being the post title, metadata and the post excerpt. The text content shares space with the image, and so the more text that is displayed, the less of the image we see initially. But on hover, the whole image becomes visible, and the text content is animated out of view. The other layout option is to have no excerpt, and to just have the post image and optionally the featured image rollover for showing post details. Let's have a closer look at how this layout has been achieved. As we can see, this is a full width column, and the container holding it has the interior content set to 100% width, with 5% padding on either side. Under the title and text here we have the blog element. If we edit that we can see that it is indeed using the masonry layout in the first option, blog layout. The next option is the number of columns in the layout, and this choice will depend a lot on your images. With the masonry layout you need to have at least two columns, and when using text in the layout it is often best to have a lower column count. Column spacing is next, and here it is set to 40 pixels. Following this there are two options that determine how your images respond in the layout. Masonry image aspect ratio is the first of these. Basically the number here represents a ratio where an image should be displayed as landscape or portrait, rather than square. The option description explains that you set the ratio above which an image should become landscape or portrait. Here the default value has been set to 1, which is a special case where the system will auto-calculate which images will be portrait and which landscape. Then there is the masonry 2x2 width option. As the description explains, this option determines when a square 1x1 one one image should become 2x2 two two in the layout. You can also set this on individual images in the media library. Following this are more of the usual blog options. You can determine how many posts are showing on the page, the post status and post offset, how the posts are pulled, and which categories are used. In this instance of the blog element, only the in the press category is being used. For a full rundown of every option in the blog element, see the linked video, but I'm going to skip down to a couple of relevant options for the masonry layout. The show title option is set to yes, and in the content display option we can see that the excerpt option has been chosen, with an excerpt length of 10. Also note how the show meta info is turned off. If we turn this on, we can now see less of the image. So with this layout, it's also best to limit the amount of text displayed. I'll just turn that off again. Another cool option with the masonry layout is the grid box color. If we change this from white to an almost transparent white, we can see the image show through. Now that might not work well with all images, as we can see here down the bottom, so use your discretion here. I'll just reset the default value. The options we see when we mouse over the images are independent of the masonry layout, and can be found in the global options under Extras, Featured Image Rollover. Here you can determine exactly what is seen when mousing over the featured image. OK, so another layout would be without the text altogether. To achieve this, all we have to do is set the Show Title option to No, set the Content Display option to No Text, and remove the Blog Grid text padding. By default here it has padding all around. We could remove it in the global options for the blog element, or we could just remove it in this instance, which I will do here. 
With the text removed, I might also just reduce the column spacing to 10. And yeah, that looks good. OK, let's look at another site that uses the masonry layout, but this time on the portfolio element. It's the Photography Light website. And here on the My Work page, there's an instance of the portfolio element using the masonry layout. It's already set to show no text, and has an image rollover with the portfolio title on it. If we edit the element, we can see it's using the masonry layout, with no text selected in the text layout option. It's a little bit different to the blog element, but the same principles apply. For example, we could change this option to boxed, reduce the opacity on the grid box color option as before, and then set the portfolio title display to only title. And now it looks quite different. And then perhaps we could change the rollover options to only show the link icon. There are many options with the masonry layout, and with the blog and portfolio elements, the image layout is determined by the order you display the posts in. If we change the order by option to portfolio order, for example, we get a completely different layout. It's a powerful layout option that can be used in many ways across the blog, portfolio and gallery elements. So check it out and see if it will work for your site. It's something quite different from the standard grid. OK, this concludes our video on how to use the masonry layout in the blog and portfolio elements. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.